Hey guys, I'm Callie Lewis. And I am John P. On today's Geek Beat, Japanese toilets, they may just kill you. Burgers are now made in Petri dishes. A creepy doll for hackers. A real life Wally. -E. And Time Warner gives CBS the finger. Whoa. It all begins <laughs> right now. you were about to say something else there for a second, Ben, John. I know you did. I know you thought I was going to give, you thought I was going to give the finger. I did. How are you guys today? I hope you're going to have a great weekend or having a great week whenever you're watching this. I hope you had a great week between the last time you watched it and now. You want to tell them how good they look? You they look absolutely fantastic. Did Stunning. you do something to your hair? Yes. It's fantastic. Somebody actually um, put on YouTube a response to that. Oh, did they? <laughs> yeah. I nice. forget what they said, but I remember them nice. responding to that. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. As they should. So, um, I A lot's not... happened this week. Yes, indeed. I think we have to start with a piece of mail that we got. We did get some viewer mail. Yay! A postcard from the other side of the world. From Paul Dixon. Paul, you're awesome. Good day, mate. He says he thinks that he thought it was about time he sends something for the viewer wall of fame. So here's a postcard. Uh, thanks, thanks, thanks. It, and uh, you told me your handwriting was bad, Paul. It's not that bad. It is not bad at all. That not is, bad at all. That's good handwriting. All right, turn it around yeah, because see, on the front, he stuck a QR code like we wouldn't notice. <laughs> right. So we <laughs> scanned it and look at what we got. A custom landing page. That is awesome. It says it, this is a picture gummies of, um, and bacon. Our mobile. It's a. It nations is a picture video. of us from Mobile Nations. We look like we're in a Broadway show, so we hammed it up there a bit. That it's is hilarious. fantastic. So this is going straight to the viewer wall That's of right. fame. Thank you, Paul. We might have to print this out to go beside it. Yeah, we might have to. All right. Well, you know. Um, Speaking of gummies. Let's not move on to gummies just yet. But I have something for gummies. Okay, go ahead. I don't have any gummies here. I know you don't because they're all on this dress. What? <laughs> There's this dress that is done by two Japanese designers um, for a inaugural edition of a, of a magazine called 12. Um, these are 50,000 gummy bears. Wow. Glued to a vinyl sheet. Guess well, how much it weighs for this poor model. I don't know, like 50 pounds? 220 pounds. Oh, that, that little waif can't move 220 pounds. I know. They had to, she had to have three people help her walk. <laughs> well, when you first said there was a gummy dress, my thought was, I hope it's wrapped around some really hot model so I can make a joke about eating the gummy dr oh, dress or whatever. Oh, that's just in bad whatever. taste, John. No, it's in good taste. <laughs> but 450,000 calories worth of taste. I'm sorry, she's not good enough to make that joke about. What I'm sorry. are you talking about? No, she's not. I'm sorry. She's a hot model. Okay, can we get back to the whole uh, UK situation? Sure, what's going on over there? It's not actually official yet, so I don't normally spill the beans on these oh. things, but it's like 90% right. going to happen, so it looks you. like we're probably coming to the UK. So yes. that's the big news. We're probably going to come to the UK. I said that, but... We're not telling you anything else about it yet. But it will be, you know, this year, Yes. later on. And if we do indeed, we will certainly have meetups and all of that for you guys. That's right. And, oh, we, we, and, if we, and we may also be going to Boston, right? Right. We may be going to Boston. So, two meetups to look forward to. Hopefully they happen because it hasn't been finalized, John P. <laughs> now, we also had uh, a few other things happen. First of all... You sound so serious. What is up with you? I am you? very serious. This is a serious matter. <laughs> um, we have some super secret kayak stuff going on. Those of you may recall, if you saw that episode last week, when I released the episode about hacking a motor onto my kayak. Yes. I believe we first kind of leaked it to you guys here. Well, we have something else. Dave, did you get that picture I sent you? Uh, a picture of the... Of the Ka the, the kayak. Super secret. No, the picture, the picture that's the link is of our YouTube page. 
No, oh no, no. In the in the notes, sorry, in the notes, there's a there's a link to the new. Well, you didn't tell him you put it in there, so he didn't grab it. He can find it. It's in the show notes. It's under. Uh, it's on line thirteen or whatever it is. Yeah, and I click on it, and it goes right. Oh. What? It goes right. That's not the right one. To that. There you go. Nice. John. No, that's not it. <laughs> Ah! <laughs> so go fail. to youtube.com slash geekbtv and hit Never that subscribe mind. button, folks. That one's going to stay super secret for now because I didn't give him the right picture. Uh, I'll share it on my damn Google Plus, <laughs> people. Bang! Well, bad we, John. Look, are we bang. also going to um, release the announcement of the super secret other project we have going on? Are yeah, sure. I don't even know what it is. What is it? Kickstarter? Or not? Okay, we'll tell you, but we won't tell you anything about it. Look for a fun Kickstarter project coming up from us soon. We are launching a Kickstarter project. <laughs> That's right. You'll probably see it next week. I've already submitted it to Kickstarter. We'll see if they approve it. Yeah, that's going to be the tricky part. I'm not sure if they will. But you know what? Something that was already approved. What? I have a robot in the studio. Oh, God. And we have a special guest. We do indeed. So, Dave, why don't you come on over here? <laughs> so, some you guys... of you may remember that uh, back at Macworld, yes. we, we did a, an interview with the guys who founded uh, Double, Double Robotics. Robotics. And they were building a new robot that is a telepresence robot. They just call it the Double. Dave Peterson, our editor-in-chief, and you guys know him, he works out from Seattle. And so he can't be here with all the fun and joy that we have Come on here up, at Dave. the office on an everyday basis. So now he can, which is awesome. That's right. He, <laughs> Dave is driven in here on the set with his little double. He's, he's turning around. <laughs> Almost. Almost. There you go. There we go. Now he's, he's in his spot. And our Pablo, Hi, the intern. Hi. And he's still coming him. up. Look at him. Yep. Yeah, Pablo put a t-shirt on him. <laughs> so uh, there's so, Dave. You guys wanted to see it in action, so we wanted to give you this little uh, short demo. Say hi, Dave. We're hi, everybody. Greetings from Seattle. <laughs> so Dave can just drive all over the office and sneak up on us. Yep. The damn thing is silent, okay? So he sneaks up on us and he like goes, hey, Boom. right behind us. Yep. Like, whoa. Ah. So. All right, so we are going to uh, be talking about uh, burgers later. Mm. Uh, Dave, why don't you answer the fame spot question of the day? Would you eat a burger grown in a lab? It depends on how clean the lab was. Is this a really well kept lab? <laughs> what kind of answer was that? You, <laughs> you guys, guys give us your answer. Go to geekbeat.tv forward slash fame spot, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to Geek Beat Live. I am John P. And he is in a, all sorts of moods today from drinking his... That's Callie Lewis. His uh, Mountain Dew Red. Code Red. That I love it. it I endorse do it. good things for him. And they don't even pay me money. <laughs> I've been banned from drinking it, though. I'm not allowed to drink it in the studio, yeah, but I snuck out managed. at lunch. And I got one anyway. All right. So we got to get right on into the news. It we makes me a little rambunctious. Show today. I am not going to lie. All right, CBS and Time Warner Cable have been going at each other's throats for a while now, and it finally came to a head. It's gotten really hot in here. Wow. Have you been drinking my Code Red? No, I'm just trying to amp it up a little bit to okay. match your level. You're going to have to try a little <laughs> harder than that. All right, so CBS at, is no longer being aired on Time Warner not Cable. Not only CBS, nothing even owned by CBS. Right. Showtime. Showtime. CBS, Flicks, yep. Movie Channel, Smithsonian, all gone. All gone. Now, Time Warner Cable says um, that CBS is wanting a 600% increase in their fees. Yeah, first I was a little pissed off at Time Warner. But then when they said that CBS wanted 600% more money, I was like, Whew. 
Okay, now I'm pissed off at CBS. Right. Well, but then it got a worse. Bit of a power play going on for sure. Well, then it got much worse. Right. Oh, I went to online as well. Because what happened was Time Warner then started telling people, okay, sorry guys, look, we can't pay 600 percent more. A little more, maybe 600 percent more. Not reasonable, but. What you can do is you can just get your local CBS over the air with an antenna on your TV. Not convenient, but right. you can do that. And then you could also go online and watch your Showtime and stuff through the online channels. So CBS said, you know what? Screw you, Time Warner customers. You can't even access us through Time Warner Internet. We're shutting the access down from... From so any if you time try, Warner connection, you get a message say kind of an attack ad at um, at Time Warner and or uh, at CBS. Um, sorry, at Time Warner, right? Um, saying, "Hey, we can't display any of this content." So that is what's going on. If you have realized that you can't access any of your favorite content, sorry. This is an absolute affront to free a free and open internet people. It's one thing for CBS and Time Warner to be having a little spat, but it's a totally different thing for CBS to be blocking access to an entire network of people. So CBS, screw you! And that's my final word on that matter. Bang. All right, hey, uh, that, moving this, on. Does this violate net neutrality? Yeah, oh well, yeah. Well, yeah, is that's just, the argument. It's just unbelievable. Is that it violates net neutrality. It's unbelievable. Let's move on to Jeff Bezos. Yeah, um, he's so awesome. So he actually just bought the Washington Post. Why wouldn't he? Now, he did. Amazon did not. Jeff Bezos did. Uh, Chunk so, change. Yeah, yeah. 250 apparently. mil. He was like, I can drop two. It doesn't see. matter. I would like to have the ability to have a sounding board for my ideas. Who should I run that by? I'll just buy the Washington Post. <laughs> now, he. Uh, this is actually a very interesting concept. You, you know he I beat think me out of that. I only bid 240 million. Uh, he gave him 250. He I was should like, have gone 250. Really? 10 mil, la a lousy 10 mil? Now, he's not looking to make all these sorts of changes and everything. All the executives and CEO, they're staying on board and they're staying right where they are. They're going to do the same thing they always have. But he's looking to do a little bit more innovation. So I, I actually like this concept. Well, that's what he the says publicly. Publicly. Well, <laughs> look, well, rich don't people. Don't go into a conspiracy theory here. Uh, it's not a conspiracy. It's a fact. Rich people throughout history have always bought newspapers and things like that because that way they can kind of steer things towards their own personal interests. Even if they don't absolutely control it, they can kind of guide it, and it's good for them. It's good to well, be able to own major news what sources What I of hope perfect, happens perfect is case that in point. the newspaper industry is... <laughs> perfect case in point. John's a partner here. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the newspaper industry is in you know, all sorts of trouble. They've mm -hmm. been losing, the Washington Post has been losing money, crazy amounts of money for years now. Mm -hmm. So if somebody like Jeff who has you know new concepts and knows the, the new world that we live in. And deep pockets. And deep pockets comes in and maybe helps give them a little bit of oomph in the right direction. That could be a very good thing for the newspaper industry. It could be. And speaking of other things, Amazon having nothing to do with Jeff Bezos other than the fact that he owns Amazon, Amazon is actually opening up a new art gallery kind of thing called yeah. Amazon Art. And what they're going to do is they're going to have about 4,500 artists and 40,000 pieces of artwork. So it's going to be like an online virtual art gallery where you can buy stuff and then Amazon takes their cut like somewhere in the 5 to 20% range. Yep. So I'm looking forward to that. Maybe if yeah, it goes that well, could be very good. maybe I'll even sell some of my art on maybe there. Maybe you should. <laughs> I'm actually some excited about something that's coming to the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Which is? Aereo. Um, the Aereo is a service that has been in the news. We've talked about them for a while now. Uh, what they do is they lease out small antennas in a city, um, and then basically they provide you your TV service. They access over-the-air TV service, but deliver it to you through the web. So you can access it on all your devices uh, through Roku or if you're out of and town stuff like or that, whatever. Apple TV or on a mobile device. So I the, still don't understand this service. Well, this I don't is, get it. What, think I of mean, it as 
think of it in between normal cable television service and Hulu. Can I get any local channel in any city or only the ones in my own city? Um, I believe it's only your city. So, so what? I can just ha I have an attic antenna that works perfectly. I get like right. 50, 60 digital channels in they my house. They also offer DVR service. So that's where the in-between comes in. Okay. So you can, you can access your content like you do if you pay crazy amounts for cable television service. But you have the flexibility to access it on any device, hey. plus DVR service. John, so, okay. John, it's like having one of those Hapog or Win TV DVR yeah. USB cards. It's I don't even know what you're talking about, Dave. <laughs> Are you a geek? <laughs> yeah, you just lost all geek. Yeah. Points, huh? yeah. It's $8 a month, just like Netflix and Hulu Plus. Anyway, they're expanding to more markets, despite the fact that they have uh, been a lot, you know, sued out of... Not almost out of almost existence. Almost out of existence. But not. But they're coming to Miami, Chicago, Houston, Dallas. And uh, yeah, so I'm excited about that. All I'm going right. to give that a try. When it Sounds comes. exciting. We got to go to commercial break now. All right. We'll be right back with more Geek Beat. Hey, guys. Welcome back to Geek Beat Live. I'm Callie Lewis. I'm John P. And we are going to go right into gadgets. I'm just going to keep us moving along here because we've got such so many things to talk about. We've already had to actually cut out a bunch. All right. Talk. All right. So this week, the big launch of the week was L from LG. They launched the G2 smartphone, which uh, is the biggest thing about this. Well, it's big. Uh, would you like to put your phone on vibrate? Or Speaking on, of on big phones, mute there. <laughs> my phone is going off. <laughs> Actually, hold that up. Okay. So the the Note 2 is five and a half inches. The uh, G2 is actually only 5.2 inches, so it's it's smaller. But it's almost as big. This is a big phone. This is, is like the biggest big phone. phone you can get. Exactly. And it's almost as big. Now, the interesting thing about the G2 is where they put the buttons. The only buttons on this uh, the new phone is, I'm sure LG loves that I'm using a Samsung device to, yeah, to, to, to demo. To do well, that. Oh, there we go. Us, we have the pictures. When they send us one of those, <laughs> we'll use that. So uh, they put the, the volume uh, and power buttons on the back underneath the camera because... Got, wait a minute, right in the hold, middle of the dang thing? Most people actually hold their phone like this, right? Yeah, let me move and your so, hair out of the way oh, like that. Like that. Like so that. They, they keep their finger kind of right here. So in order to control volume, um, they thought maybe it'll be easier if it's back there. Okay, well... We'll see if that works out in reality. Yep. But looks like a pretty good camera, but pretty good phone. By the way, don't anybody be tweeting me right now while we're live because you'd be setting off my phone and stuff. Why don't you just put it on mute? Like I did. everyone else does around here, except that I did not either. I'm Whoops. just realizing, and it's in my office. But The next story away. we have for you guys is kind of cool. Did you know, you know, for a long time, Apple dominated both the smartphone and the tablet space. But Not anymore. Now, according to IDC, Android, Android phone shipments have increased by 75% last year, and now Androids make up 80% of the entire phone market. Yeah, indeed. It's uh, So now iPhone shipments did rise 20%, yep. but they only went to like 13.6% well, of about it. the if market. It, so. it, uh, I, I, iOS phones, mm -hmm. iPhones rose 20%. Android phones rose 75%. Yeah. That's crazy, and that's awesome. Um, and actually, somebody <laughs> tweeted me the other day because we sent out a, phone, a link that was iOS only, but they actually have access on Android, and they were like, ah, Android's bigger now. Why'd you do that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is fair. Yeah. All right. We're going to go back to quick commercial break and come back, and we have more awesome stuff for you guys. We also have a fame spot. We do. We haven't told you the story yet. We're going to come back uh -huh. with it, but here's the fame spot question of the day. Would you eat beef that was grown in a lab? I'm not sure whether to uh, say yes or no to that, actually. I but think it depends on how it tastes. You let us know what you think. Send on a video at geekbeat.tv slash famespot. That's your host, 
Callie Lewis. That's your other host, John P. I am her trusty sidekick. Nice, John. John P. <laughs> Rust, I'm her rusty. rusty sidekick. Rusty or trusty? Rusty sidekick. I'm not sure I trust you when you're on uh, Mountain Dew Red. Oh, God, I love this stuff. <laughs> I've got to have some more right now, even though it's time for science. Yes, actually. So this is a big, huge story. Everybody's talking about it, so we had to, too. And... Now I'm getting hungry even thinking about it. Well, you know what would what satisfy would that hunger? A $330,000 burger. It might just do it. It was actually uh, grown in a lab from stem cells That's as opposed right. to coming from a cow. Professor Mark Post of the Netherlands. Yeah, you say that. Maastricht University. <laughs> has served up the world's most expensive burger. That's it, people. It's, it's $330,000 worth of meat in that little pan. He's frying it up, and he fed it to a bunch of friggin', I don't know, people who would eat it, okay? Now, what I find Look, interesting about Look at this it. is that they have, no one has said how it actually tasted, even though they had the taste test. You know what? Hang on, go back a picture there for a second. I am pissed. Why? Because look. There is there are no grill marks on that. They literally fried a three hundred thirty thousand dollar <laughs> burger. I wouldn't do that to a ninety nine cent piece of meat, people. That should have been cooked on a grill. No. Professor, next time you have a three hundred thousand dollar burger, bring it to my house. I will cook it for you the right way. Okay, now, you can go back to the pictures. They had um. Uh, so yeah, they nobody has said how it tasted. I haven't seen anything about that. I so I know she's like, I don't know about this. Yeah, but she's a vegan, <laughs> right? Well, okay. So Sergey Brin, actually, uh, founder of Google, um, actually uh, invested invested in this years ago, and so they've been working on it. Um, and and there's a video you can find it at keepy.tv slash live one oh six maybe. Is that right? Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Um, Until next week. <laughs> uh, anyway, there's a video where they talk about why they went through this process and everything. And of course, a lot of it has to do with humane reasons, um, but also uh, just cost and all of that. Obviously, this costs a lot, but well, once they get like, it... Something like 80% of all the money spent on food mm -hmm. like production goes towards meat. Okay, so the problem is that actually cows and other animals they produce a lot of methane gas which right. is a greenhouse gas so the more meat we grow the worse the greenhouse effect gets yeah. and everything else so they thought well let's just grow some meat in the lab and see how it tastes and oh. i'm cool with that yeah we still don't know how it tastes the, the biggest problem is i don't think you can grow a steak like that you can grind it up it's true you can grind it up and make a hamburger out of it but you can't make a ribeye and uh, guess what we're having for dinner tonight? <laughs> Ribeye, baby. You're making me hungry. All, All right. right. Well, how about also cheaper um, plastic? So they are now doing, um, they're now creating plastic out of... Uh, Bio, bio stuff. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> plastic is normally made from petroleum, so every time you get one of those plastic bags at the grocery store, you're like wasting a gallon of oil. Every, every, right. Every time you get a plastic bag, you kill a tire. But now, that's right, every time you get a plastic bag, a tire has to die. But now, some brainiacs over in Massachusetts in Cambridge, which is where MIT is and all that stuff. Yes. They are, they've invented some kind of plastic that comes from switchback grass. I don't know what I, that is. Switchblade. Switchblade. Switchblade grass. So I think I think switchblade is the are those like just long, those really long, thicker pieces. I of, think those of are grass. the ones my father used to beat me with as a child. Therefore. I'm not interested in this bioplastic. Uh, yes, his father is here in the studio today. That's right. Does um, it look like that? Anyway, that'll be actually yes, very interesting. Yes, that's what it looks like. Oh, it my gosh. It comes in many varieties, <laughs> many shapes, sizes, and colors. No, I think it's that long stuff that uh, you see, like, it's the, cheaps, the cheap kind of grass. Okay, can we move on to hacks and cheats? We could. Because we got good hacks and cheats today. You guys know I love my Japanese toilets, right? Like, those things are just pure awesomeness. I've you've talked about them way too much for And now I love them topic. just as much as she does. But I will not get on one anymore, as long as it's a Lixel Satis. Um, I think that's I the brand. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Lixal so, status. So Japanese toilets traditionally um, have have uh, better features like washing and drying and noise making. And, um, and heated seats, heated, seats. heated rims. So well, when you sit down, it's like heated, and then it'll wash you and dry you, and all this. And now the toilets have gotten so smart that they've given them Bluetooth connectivity. There's just one little bitty thing they forgot, which is the connection is. You know how when you connect something to Bluetooth, you have to put in a code a lot of times. Well, the default code is zero 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 on this particular one, which means anyone could just hack into here, download the app. Well, it's not really it's hacking not really so hacking, much. You just download the app, go to a public <laughs> Japanese bathroom, Type find, in the code. just connect to any toilet, and, and then say, oh, turn on the bidet feature ah! while there's a guy sitting there in a business suit. Splash! <laughs> Give him a little bit of air drying when he's not expecting oh, it. Oh, yeah. Whatever so, it takes, okay? So... People are not going to be very happy with that. They're going to have to fix that. You might want to You might want to watch out for those Japanese toilets. <laughs> okay, another thing you're going to want to watch out for is... Creepy doll! Your cell phone. That's right. Any old cell phone because Brendan O'Connor, who is like this super hacker that works for the... Everywhere, NSA? DARPA, oh. probably the NSA, but they'd never tell us, uh, or anything else. Well, he's created something called the distributed, I mean, sorry, the creepy distributed object locator, also known as the creepy doll. Creepy doll. And what it is, is uh, it, it's comprised of these little units that are called F bombs. Really? He I'm went not there. kidding. It's I called know. an F bomb. He really went it there. It stands for something, but I'm not going to tell you right now. These are little units that contain Raspberry Pi processors and Wi-Fi chips and all this stuff. They you basically look for devices they can they well, can. First of all, they're ruggedized, to. so you could like drop them out of a plane. You could drop hundreds of these things if you wanted all over an area, but they're ruggedized. You drop them somewhere, you spread them around. Mm -hmm. They watch for Wi-Fi signals, phone call signals, etc. And anyone who has the creepy doll right. application can snoop and see who you're calling, what you're doing. They can get all your information off of your phone. Basically track you. Here's what he said. Take all that information and, you know. He said, for a few hundred dollars, I can track your every movement, activity, and interaction until I find whatever it takes to blackmail you. Wow. Creepy. And they only cost $50 each. So, <laughs> all right, with that, it is time for us to take a quick break. We will be back in a few moments. Don't forget to let us know if you would eat that lab grown burger or not. Yeah, geekme.tv forward slash fame spot. Be right back. Back to Geeky Live. You weren't prepared, so I just took over. It was your turn. Oh, okay. It was your turn to bring <laughs> us back from commercial break. Are you ready for robots, guys? I'm never ready for robots, but what do you have that's going to kill us today? All right. Well, nothing that's going to kill you because it is on the surface of Mars. Curiosity this week turned one. Oh, well, that's good. I cool. actually go by the date that it landed on Mars in uh, 2012. So it was the, it was its first year anniversary this week on the 5th. And uh, because the NASA specialists had nothing better to do, they made it possible so that it could sing itself happy birthday. Uh, we actually How have some exactly video. Does yeah, let's do turn that. the sound up on this. So that's it, singing its happy birthday. And uh, yeah, they, they wrote a whole program to do it. Um, Maybe NASA's overfunded. <laughs> I don't think they spent that much money on it. Okay, all right. But happy birthday to Curiosity. All, all right. right. Um, so also, let's talk about space. The Japanese, we're back to the Japanese. They, of course, sent a little robot that can talk. Um, and listen and, and talk to astronauts up in space. So they're sending this little guy. Oh, he's pretty cool. He's pretty awesome looking. Kirobo. And uh, he actually is arriving soon on the International Space Station. Great. Now I know you actually, want Actually, he already has. 
Um, he's like 13 inches tall. He was built after, um, he was designed after, oh, it was here. Where'd it go? Shoot. I don't, uh, it was built after like some kind of uh, character that was, that's been in existence. He weighs 2.2 pounds. And basically the whole point here is because astronauts are, get lonely, right? And then they start having mental problems and then they, you know, hurt the electronics or whatever. I get lonely too. <laughs> so this robot will Maybe that's learn, what happened. will kind of talk to the person. They'll understand that this is the one person that, that they're supposed to talk to. And maybe they could uh, ultimately monitor the health of the astronauts. And if they start to go a little crazy, report back to the Will um, the robot kill them to the Earth. if they start to go crazy? The robot will just... No. Didn't we see this they in might, Alien? They might learn to be therapeutic is and the, help the astronauts. By any chance, does that robot's Japanese name translate into Chucky in English? No. Okay. It actually translates into Hal. Oh, okay, Hal. Okay. Hal, right. right. Um, okay, another one. Uh, Wally. I do like Wally. From the movie. I love that movie. It's a great movie. Um, Wally actually will. It's an animated robot, right? But this guy, Michael McAster, McMaster, decided to build a real live, full-sized one. Sweetness! So they went to the movie and actually took a lot of screenshots and, and kind of determined exactly how big he would be if he were a real thing. Uh -huh. And they built him. So this is actually a good video Why interview. didn't we do that? I know. Why didn't we? What's wrong with us? Ugh. I mean, we only have too much to do already in a day, but why didn't we do that? All right. All right, and then last one, real quick, if you are interested in getting your kids into, you know, uh, robotics and everything, Arduino actually, they, they make the um, Arduino Uno, but they actually finally have come out with their own full kit that you can just buy and build out the kit. So any kits you guys, you guys know you like, I know, so let's I know put it you this do. Way. Let's put it this way. We all know that one day the robots are going to kill us all. You might as well let your children be the ones who build the killer robots. At least you might be last on the list. I don't know. That makes sense. That makes really? sense to me. I'm pretty sure. You're going to go there? I am. You now bring the kids into this? Now it's time to go to planes, trains, and automobiles. Tell me what's better than Curiosity singing itself. Happy birthday. Okay, well, this is definitely better than that. Over in uh, South Korea, uh, okay, let me put it, let me back up for a second. You know, sometimes you go to places where they have buses that are like trolley car things, and they've got all those metal yes. wires over the streets. Like San Francisco? Like San Francisco. It looks like trash because yes. there's metal wires everywhere. It looks Correct. dangerous. And, you know, people, kids throw the other kids' shoes up there on those wires. And then they try and climb up there and get okay, them. They so get electrocuted what, and they what's die. What's going on in South Korea? Oh, back in South Korea, uh, what they're doing is they are tearing up some of the roads and they're laying power lines under the roads and they're launching O-line electronic vehicles like this one that have uh, b basically what they do is they have small little batteries in them and they drive with electric motors and they use wireless induction charging as they drive down the Whoa. streets to power the entire bus. And because the bus, you know, it, it's electric, but it doesn't have to have tons of batteries, it makes the bus lighter, it leaves more room for the passengers, it's greener and all that other stuff. Um, and so the coolest thing I think is that when I first saw this, I thought, oh, they have to have those power lines under all the entire the road. Through, yeah. No. They only have to do it for a little bit, like maybe 15% of the road surface, okay. so that as it's driving over, also the road is smart enough to detect when those buses is there, and it turns it on. When the bus oh. isn't there, it turns it off, so bicyclists and cars and everything. It wouldn't really hurt them, but A, it would waste power, and B, yeah. you know, you just don't need all that electrical exposure. So I think that's Very pretty awesome. Very interesting. But, so right. they're going to have to dig up all the roads, though, or 15% of the roads. Yeah. So it'll be quite the project. Well, they're only doing it on some roads, and they've only got two of these buses going to start with. It's a pilot, okay. but if it goes well, they'll add more buses, they'll add more roads. And wouldn't it be cool if, like, all roads were like that, and you could buy cars 
that could do the yeah. same darn thing. So That'd now be we're cool. seeing a battle of uh, on the road technology and stuff like last week that we saw that uh, flying brings, car that brings the cars up into the air. Yeah. So who's gonna win? Everybody. I don't know. We all win. Okay. <laughs> now moving on, we're gonna go completely the opposite oh, direction okay. here. We're gonna talk about boats. Okay. And we're not talking about kayaks. We're talking about big old boats. Big boats. Icebreakers. Yeah. Ooh. Okay, there is a company out of Finland that, you know the way icebreakers work is you get a big old boat with a very tough bow and you just ram into the ice right. and it breaks it and pushes it aside and then other it kind of plows a channel. Uh -huh. It's like a snow plow yeah. on, the water. on the water. But the problem is it can only make a channel as wide as the boat is wide. Correct. So Unless it goes up and down, up and yeah, down. Yeah, you'd have to go. Then, yeah. Okay. Anyway, what they're doing is designing a new boat that can go sideways and break the ice. Wow. So that you can basically, instead of just the width of the boat, you get the whole length of the boat. So it's just showing the picture. There you go. He goes sideways through and makes a much bigger Very channel cool. through the water. Okay. Now, it doesn't go exactly perfectly sideways. It goes at about a 30 degree okay. angle sideways. So it's not 100%, you know, sideways, but still. But once some ice is broken, isn't that enough for the bigger ships to just plow through the rest no. anyway? No, because there was this little boat back in 1912 called the Titanic. That didn't work so well for them. <laughs> what happens is those, I don't know ice, what you're talking about. those ice breakers, they can break up to two foot oh, thick okay. sheets of ice, okay? However thick they plow, those others have to stay right in the middle oh, of that okay. channel because if there's pieces gouging out the side and they're connected and it's two foot thick and you hit it. We could have another Titanic. You're going down. Okay. So that's kind of cool. Nice. All right, that's All right. it. Time for unboxing, I think. It is unboxing time. Well, good right after we come back from commercial yes, break. Yes, we will come back from commercial break. And that's right after you go to geekbeat.tv forward slash fame spot and tell us if you would eat meat grown in a lab. Guess what time it is? Unboxing time. Yay! Everyone loves unboxing time. I hope you guys do. We do. We get so many products in throughout the week that we hold them until Fridays so that we can share the experience with you guys. Although you didn't do that with the double robotics double. I did not at all. You just ripped into that thing I so want, fast. I, you know, Peterson I was looking out for Peterson. I was sure you were. making sure that he had the okay. ability to join us. Let's not lollygag. we got a bunch of boxes. I've been waiting. You, you have to small, grab medium, them. or large? Large. Oh, large it is. Here's the largest one we got. Okay, here we go. Do you know what this is? <gasps> yes, I do. Awesome. You're going to have to kind of pull it out. Okay. Let's see. Okay, so this That's is the Torquitos. That's what she said. I had <laughs> to say that. you would avoid that. The Torquitos. So, is that how you say it? The Torquitos. So, this is actually uh, a new... Okay, so you have spent all that time hacking your kayak. Yeah. And I decided... Huh. He's silly. He's spending so much time doing that. I'm just going to go out and get myself a motor that I can just attach. She figured she'd go the easy route and actually get the world's only kayak motor, exactly. the Torquedo. So, that's not very redneck of her. This <laughs> is the. In, a, oh my gosh, this smells like brand new. Yeah, it's the. It is brand new. This is the entire thing. The whole system here, as compared to my big hack. This whole system only weighs like 17 right. pounds. Yeah, it's super light. It's It looks great. Um, it's faster it's, than mine. It's going to be, yeah, it's faster than yours. The it's battery gonna be lasts longer. It's easier to install for sure. And uh, so we're going to do a video of, you know, we've already done some video of him doing his hacking thing. We're going to do a video of how this compares and how hopefully easy it is to install. We'll see. Yeah, we will see. So this is awesome. If you guys want to check it out, you can go to go, do a search for Torquedo or go right here. Geeky.tv slash live 106. All right. I'm so excited. I know you are. We'll have to race our boats. Even though, you know, our, like, 
We're going to race our uh, kayaks once we get yeah. the motor on this one. <laughs> All right, what's next? Okay, I don't know. Here, I'll grab this one. This is still pretty big. Oh, we got a bunch of big boxes yeah, today. Yeah, I don't know what's going on What with does that. this say? This says lunch, lunch decoy. decoy. I have no okay. idea what that is. Okay, let's see. Let's you got see. that. You open the box. Here's some envelopes. Your mission, if you choose to accept it, is to free these lunch decoys from their boxes. You, your coworkers, and your friends no longer need to eat lunch at your desk just to impress your boss. Uh, don't take that to heart, guys. Um, yeah. You know, <laughs> what does that mean? There's, first of all, there's a bunch of boxes in here, okay? Just so you can see. There's a bunch of boxes. They're all white. I don't Each know what that is. Each decoy has a personalization kit to ensure it looks exactly like you. What does that say on the on that? It says on that box. The cubicle queen industrial strength lunch decoy. Okay, let's see what this is. Uh, let's see. Got here. like stickers in oh, here. Oh, here we go. Lunch decoy meat. Ah. Longer lasting. Nice. Oh, look at it. it is a blow up ah. doll. Hey, dude. Is that, is that you, from that company that sent us that toy? No, it's not from the sex toy company. <laughs> this is a blow-up doll that you put in your cubicle when you go to lunch so that people don't know that you're out at lunch too long. That, that is, is awesome. funny. That's like the HOV companion. That Yeah, bonus. exactly. Like the HOV Wait, companion. it has a bonus customization <gasps> kit. Oh. So you can stick glasses, you can stick it's a like necklace, a, necklace or... a little pin, earrings, and whatever. And so then these others, it, it says the executive, the Wait, self let's starter. See. I want to see. What it. does yours look like? I don't know. What's mine? Appar that that kind of looks like me. She's brunette. That does look kind of like Callie, doesn't it? That's kind of like Callie. Let's see, this is the executive. Okay. It kind of looks like Obama. <laughs> it's like the presidential executive, okay? Wearing That's a blue awesome. suit, I guess. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay, right. well, we'll, well, we'll, we'll, we'll unbox the rest of these I later on we'll, and we'll uh, share them uh, with you guys. That's and we'll funny. have to blow them up because. I was going to say that, but I didn't really want to say that. That looks fun. Because oh, then I'd say that's what she said. Exactly. Okay. Here's the small box of the day. I have okay. no idea what this is. Uh, it's got a note. To Callie and John, here are some goodies from FAO Schwartz, New oh, York Bobbage. City. From Bobage. Nice. Why do the zombie snacks have expiration dates? <laughs> P.S. What do we have? Oh, my gosh. Oh, that is awesome. Zombie blood? What is that? Crusty zombie toenails. Okay for human consumption. Curly and smelly. May Ew. reek of the stench of death. <laughs> Zombie skin. A scab. <laughs> Zombie jerky. Ooh. Teriyaki. It's beef jerky. Delicious. Nice. Gummy, um, I mean, bacon gumballs and gum bacon mints, bacon beans, jelly beans, and gummy bacon. It says it tastes like strawberry. What? This... This zombie blood says flavor. energy potion. Do you want to try it? Similar nutrients to real blood, lifeless lime flavor, up to four hours of energy, disturbing source of electrolytes, zombie mutagen free, not an actual biohazard. Here you go. What is that? It's strawberry gummy. It's gummy. It's strawberry? Uh -huh. It's not bacon? It's, it's strawberry. Okay. It looks like bacon. It looks like bacon. No, put that on the grill. How is it? Mmm, that's delicious. Does it taste like strawberry? That crunchy? That's actually ah. delicious. <laughs> what is that? Uh. Gummy bacon strawberry flavored. From All Uncle right. Oinkers. Mmm. <laughs> oh, I love it. It's delicious. Thank you, Bobbage. You're Thank so you very sweet. much. This stuff is awesome. And I'm going to drink the zombie blood as soon as we get off because oh, one, one red is Mountain Dew Code Red is not enough. I need more. All right. Final box of the day. What is it? Comes Samson. from our friend, friends at Samson. What did they send us? Mm. This is awesome. Expedition I've been Express. waiting for this. This is cool. The Expedition Express is a little. It's upside down. Bluetooth P 
PA speaker. Oh, another PA speaker for you, huh? I love PA speakers. <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> That's what you need. Love them because I can't be loud enough. You can never be too loud. So this will help you get even louder. It, it's small. It is small. It's compact. Let's see it. Now, there are a few things that I like about it. From what I read, I haven't seen it yet, but I've, I've read about this. Ugh, we can get it open. Here we go. It's very well packaged. It looks nice. It's very nice looking. You want to touch it? It feels good. That's nice. <laughs> okay, so it has a really cool carrying handle yeah, right here. I see that. So that I like right off the bat. Is it not heavy? No, it's, I mean, it's solid, but it's not like ridiculous. Notice on the bottom, that is an industry standard pole mount. Oh, yeah. Okay, so, so that's important because you don't want these laying on the ground. You put it on a tripod kind of mm -hmm. pole mount wherever you want it. Now, let's look at the back. What do we got? We got a it's battery operated, so we can take this out and use it wherever we want. You've got multiple inputs here. So you could have a microphone input, let's say a, a, an instrument input, and then some kind of other MP3 source input. And you could either be MP3 like from an iPod, or you could be Bluetoothing into this thing. It says okay. it has an eight hour battery life. Yeah. Uh, you, now, can't, you can't enjoy that much time outside eight hours. No, but here's my well, favorite. Here's my favorite part. This okay. is important, okay? If we're going to Bluetooth connect to this, you're going to get sound out of a single speaker unit. Yeah. But that doesn't do me any good if I'm outside and I got it a whole bunch chains? of people. It does. Nice. Notice this is a line output jack, and this is a line input jack. So in theory, we could Bluetooth connect to this one, and then we could use a cable to connect to another right. and just string them right on down the line. So how loud that's do you awesome. want? Does it go to 11? It will. It goes to 11, and that's one more. <laughs> All right. Well, that is it for the unboxings? Yeah, that's it. That's cool. a lot. I mean, that is a lot. So, you know, good we stuff. got a lot of stuff to play with. So keep stay tuned uh, for the full-on reviews of all these items and other stuff and our daily shows and all that at keepeat.tv. And, and thanks for joining us once yes. again, you guys. She is on Google+. Plus. Go to google.com forward slash plus Callie Lewis or twitter.com forward slash Callie Lewis. Callie Lewis anywhere. He is at google.com slash plus John P or twitter.com slash John Pose. That's it. Thank you, guys. Have a good one. We'll see you next week. Uh, yeah, you thought I was going to say you something. You left me hanging. I thought you were wow. going to say something. I don't know. Jeez. What you're